Okay, let me know if anybody can hear me, if we are actually live. I just had a little notification on Facebook, on YouTube, sorry, that um, live wasn't available right now. So after I'd gone through a few of my own technical problems, looked like they had it. So I'll just wait a couple of minutes, or a minute or so. So if anybody can let me know that they're, they're seeing it live, that they can hear me okay. Yep, look like it's working. <clears throat> okay, excellent. So let's jump straight in. I thought I would do um, just something, a little informal live stream. I was planning on testing out a paper, something I'd looked at a while ago. A uh, few of my members on Patreon as well, I know they, they struggle to get past on that and um, that can be a bit of an issue so I need to find an alternative um, that they can get perhaps in America a bit easier as well so what I've what I've got here on the right hand side this is a color fix paper from Art Spectrum 300 GSM and you can get in lots and lots of different colors so I know this one is is easily available which should be easily available in the States. Pastel matte is perhaps a bit more easier to get in Europe. So you've got pastel matte on the left. This is um, kind of a sable or sand color, they call it. I'm not sure what they call this one on Colorfix, but it's a flesh color. So the pastel matte is 360 GSM. I know the, the color fix, they both feel about the same thickness. They are both about the same thickness, but the color fix is easier to kind of rip and it's a little bit more fragile, but it's still a firm paper. Regarding prices, if I looked on Jackson's um, on the UK, so if we look at a, a small piece, which would be roughly um, A4-ish, so 32 centimeters by 24, a pack of five on Jackson's as I said is around about £15 for the pastel mat and if we look at the same size then for the color fix pack of 10 is around about £15 so it's half the price for that but that's a small size if we look at a single sheet then 50 centimeters by 70 centimeters the pastel mat is about £7 and the color fix is about £5 okay so it's a bit closer there on the uh, prices so, as I said, I thought I'd do a, a informal, quick um, video is all set up, and then, as luck would have it, first of all, I started having flickering on the screen because there was something interfering with the camera. It took me about 15 minutes to work that out. Once I had that all ready and set, then for some reason the microphone wouldn't work and that wasn't picking up, so I had to fix that as well. So that turned into a bit of a stressful 15 or 20 minutes. Just having a quick drink. Okay, so I haven't, I'm not doing a, a really big um, lesson. Top left hand corner, you can see it. I've got a image of a wolf I took a while ago. So this is it, a bit, little bit bigger to see. I'm just interested in how the, the paper really works out compared to pastel matte as far as layering and blending as well on those first layers. So I thought this time I'd use some pan pastels just to block in and I'll kind of do both of them roughly the same time so we can look at how each one is comparing and I may only do a few little sections on the drawing rather I'm not going to spend hours doing it. So it's a comparison but um, it's not like you know long full video of, of a finished drawing. Okay, so let me pop that out of the way so I can see it. And then you guys can watch it in the top left hand corner. With pastel papers, um, you know, they really behave differently than with pan pastel. So these are those finger tools that I like, the little sponges. Um, you can get with the pan pastel. 
they're called soft tools come in all different shapes sizes now the little shovel ones let me grab one a minute <clears throat> like this anybody that's familiar with pan parcels will have used probably one of these and they would also have found out that these are although they're very useful with the size they really wear out super fast especially on these rougher papers and what you find is they, they start to the sponge starts to pick off of it and um, you get little bits floating around on your paper which you end up then blowing off which is not a big problem but they they don't last me long at all but if you want to do details that's that's a tool you want I normally use the pans just for uh, blocking in personally and that's where these come in handy because you can just squeeze them and get those little shapes anyway and these these have been with me through a couple of really big drawings and they're not worn out at all they look dark and and uh, dingy but there's not much color you can see coming off of them I just wipe them on a microfiber cloth just like that takes off most of the color and then you can just go and dip them into your, your pans and use them like that but they are much much more cost effective doing it that way I've got my mobile in front of me so I'm looking at uh, any questions people got as well so I'll pop that by the side there and um, like I say any questions I'll glance across every now and again if I miss your questions if you want to ask it again I'll, I'll try and get back to it I've got about 40 percent battery on this so I'm hoping it'll last long enough yeah it's for those that have just tuned in this is color fix art spectrum on the right hand side and you can tell it's that it's got this white border around it so that's quite distinctive compared to a pastel mat where the paper goes right up to the edge now as far as the feel goes this is a weird thing with pastel mat when you feel the color fix it feels like a really fine sandpaper and i don't know if you can hear this okay so that's my fingernail going over it so it is a and it's really attached to it well but it's like a very fine sandpaper when you touch the pastel mat you hear a difference it's very smooth in comparison now I've read that the pastel mat is a cork based uh, surface on there now if I got a magnifying glass I got a feeling although I could be completely wrong that what we'd see on the pastel mat is probably lots of random fibers across the surface that's what I'm thinking like I said I may be wrong um, whereas these sanded papers like the color fix this is obviously I would have thought sprayed on there so that's where you've got that texture and I got a feeling that that's why pastel, pastel mat seems to take lots of layers even with a, a fine surface on there because I think those fibers are grabbing the um, pastel so I will get a magnifying glass and um, take a look at the surface and see if it you know goes down detail enough to show me that because it would be uh, quite interesting so the thing is with these surfaces if you're blending with your fingers on the first layers and pushing quite hard you can do that with pastel mat and you still end up with you know pretty much your fingerprints left on there but with the color fix you know you are eventually going to probably hurt your fingers a little bit if you're doing a big drawing and especially then with the real sanded papers um, then you're gonna find it difficult to actually rub in with your fingers because you are really looking at a proper sand paper then so that's why I thought I'd have a closer look at this I thought it was close enough to actually possibly work good enough just having a quick glance and uh, seeing what people are saying they're talking about the UART 800 right is this the super tooth standard or fine I didn't even know there was a difference I thought it was just color fix art spectrum 300 GSM so I didn't even know um, that at all 
Maximilian Holly. I have a side question. I haven't seen that email, so if you email me that again. Um, Rick says it's like you are 800, I think, and 800 eats up my pencils for fine details. Uh, Pat says used Fisher 400, ended up with bleeding fingers. Yeah, that's what I mean. They are the true um, sand papers then, the UART and the Fisher, and I've reviewed the Fisher at least on YouTube, and that's what I found, and I found that it, what it did, not only eating up the pencils, but even if you use your pastels lightly on them, then the surface is so rough that uh, it, it drags it into the surface no matter how lightly you put it on there and then you find it fills the tooth and as it fills it everything gets dusty and you struggle to put details on top so I think those papers would be with my techniques anyway more suited if you're doing really really big works or if you're doing something a bit more less detailed a bit more um, impressionistic they'd probably be good for that Okay, so let's make a bit of a start. And what I normally do with my pans, I use printer paper, just inkjet paper, nothing special at all. I usually fold it in half to make it a bit of a um, easier size to handle. I've got color here, what's this? Payne's Gray Extra Dark Pan Pastel. I never really turn them over to look at the colors. I just look at my reference and I think, well, I want to go darker than the lights that I'm seeing here because the details I'll put on with pencil. And I'm looking so in between really, but not quite as dark as what's almost pitch black in there. So I think this will work. I don't need a pure white or light going on top. So I'm not concerned and I even rather the pencils when I put on top to pick up some of the background to give me something like this color. As I said, I'm not I've, I haven't picked any colored pencils out or anything like that, any colors from my pastel pencils. So I'm just gonna wing it and not worry about it being too detailed or too realistic. Let's just see how it blends with the eye in comparison to pastel matte and how it layers on top in comparison to it. So that's the, the um, idea behind that. Okay. <clears throat> I never really apply it straight onto the paper. I kind of put some on my printer paper first because it takes a bit of it off. And I think I'll start over here with the pastel mat because you know I know how that's going to react. I'm going in the third direction. Anybody that's used to my Patreon channel, you'll all know these basic things that I'm doing and I picked this sand colored paper with the uh, pastel mat just because it was kind of like the most similar tone that I had to this color fix paper because this is uh, the main big sheet I just cut cut this off of so I wanted to give something that was similar I didn't have anything the same but color is not that important to have matched what I was more concerned about like I say was the uh, tone or color so the lights and the darks of the paper to get that accurate ish and all I've done with my webcam this time for this I've just stuck everything on auto so if the focus is going in and out a bit or something like that don't worry about that this this is just one of those I thought I'd do a quick video, or well, not necessarily a quick video, but a more relaxed video. We're not doing really a finished piece or anything like that. We're just doing a bit of testing. I said it would have been a bit more relaxed if my camera and everything had just worked straight off like it's supposed to. Okay. So okay, let's let's try and match it up now. So let's let's take it as simply as we can just having a listen to the ways they're both reacting so funnily enough even though the 
colour fix had that rougher sandy type of texture to it um, sounds quieter when when the pastel is actually going on there for some reason I, I would have thought it would have sounded a lot rougher than the um, pans but there we are there's something I wasn't expecting to start with so perhaps perhaps it'll behave more differently too unless you really give them a good go you never know do you let's go down a bit further down here so I want to just ensure what I'm thinking is happening is actually happening a minute before I tell you Okay, now what I'm seeing, let's try and get a bit more in. Do notice that straight away, what I'm seeing here, I'm getting more pastel dust on this colour fix. I'm getting an ev more even spread on the pastel mat by here. Let's um, just make sure nobody's. Get a mistake and let's put color fix on there and let's just stick a p on there for pastel matte okay so i'm finding i'm getting more dust more pastel dust so it's not dragging or holding on the surface and like i said this seems not to have such an even coating on there either so let's continue so for those that have just joined colour fix paper on the right, I've got it wrote up here now on pastel mat. On the left. Right, rubbed that on a bit of um, microfiber cloth. So let's just get a small amount of colour down by here. A bit of this browny colour there as well. Remember, I'm not sponsored or anything by Pastel Mat at all. I think a few people think that I'm uh, perhaps sponsored by them or something, and that's why I keep mentioning Pastel Mat, but I'm not. I just mention it because it's the one that I found works best for my techniques so far. If a better paper came along, that's what I'd be using. That's the cool thing when you're not sponsored, then I can use whatever I want and I'm going to keep uh, struggling with uh, the same supplies if, if something better comes along because it doesn't make any difference to my um, how I earn money whatsoever. Okay, so 100% now I can say this is creating more pastel dust. So even though it's a rough surface, it's not holding into the surface like pastel mat. And I can say that definitely now. Um, and this is kind of what I found with the, the sanded papers, the sand papers. You, you would think definitely it will drag into the surface um, and hold into the surface and you will be able to get more layers Definitely you would think, or I would think, with the, the rougher papers, but it doesn't seem to happen like that. Just darken in some areas. So this is not a lesson on how to draw realistic fur or anything like that really. This is a test of these papers against each other. darker down here that comes around a bit darker there these people get concerned about doing these first layers 
and um, you don't have to because you won't get much rougher than what I'm doing here and it kind of still looks okay in the end yeah it, this pan pastel at least seems to be um, let's just put some pastel down there as well so we can layer on top this uh, seems to be more of like a blurred out look to this now what I normally do then once I've got an initial layer done so let me um, in fact I'll put a little bit of grey down here do you have a white then I'll just lighten it up a bit because with these pans you can you can kind of add a bit of grey, a bit of white, mix things together. Might even put a bit of blue in there. Just to roughly get some colours in there. There should be white dish around about there, I'd say. Same on here, roughly. Just so I can see where these are going to live eventually, down by here. See how this pastel mat seems to take the layer better on top as well. Okay, let's get the pans out the way. Pop them over to the side. What about the colour fix smooth, Josephine said. Well, I haven't tried that either, uh, but I would have thought that this would actually be working better. Colour, um, someone says colour fix pastel primer is excellent with two coats. I've checked out pastel grounds. I'm gonna rub this in and I can tell you straight away that feels really rough on my finger. I've got a YouTube video where I test loads and loads of different pastel grounds. So check that out and yes I'm pretty sure thinking back but it was a couple of years now that the color fix ground was the one that I found was excellent and created a surface that was probably better than this surface and you could definitely layer it and I'm pretty sure I did a tiger on that okay and lots of pastel seemed to blend together then and that was uh, not very pleasant on my finger at all that was rough pastel mat is smooth it's got a velvety feel it's not smudging you see the, see this line I've got here that's got hardly any pastel on if I keep rubbing with that it doesn't fill up with pastel we're not pulling the pastel around we're just pushing it into the surface even when I go really really hard look by here so I've got quite a lot of that pan pastel there on the corner okay my fingers a bit dirty as well when I rub hard on it, it's not spreading the pastel all the way over onto the untouched paper. You see, if I'm really pushing it across, and even then it's only slightly smudging it. So I like that about pastel mat, it's holding the pastel. I don't know how they came up with the idea of this surface, but it really works. It's unique. I've, I've yet to find anything else that holds the pastel like that at all. I'll go back to my almost non um, fingerprint finger now from this one. And when I'm going, let's, have, let's try it by here then. You see how the pastel is actually pushing out the surface easily? It's just blending all the way out. This is not doing it like that. Okay, this is blending all the way away to nothing. So now you can see that I've got nice dark areas here. And this is what I found on some other papers. Whereas this is, seems to have uh, got almost gone. That's not dark enough now for me to actually put in my um, layer on top. So let me just have a quick read. 
Okay, someone's asking about Lux archival sanded paper. Um, what what the opinion is now? I'm waiting for a friend of mine. They've sent it over because I can't get it in the UK. What I can tell you, I've seen on Jackson's Art Supplies, which is the one I generally use, is the price they list him for it at the moment is astronomical. <laughs> the price, unless they've put the price completely wrong on there, it's very very expensive. Um, I've got a feeling that it's going to be kind of a sanded paper like a UART um, Richardson's and, and all those. I think it's going to be a sanded surface paper and if that's true then I think it's going to react like those other ones similar to it. It may be even better than them but I got a feeling that if it's a sanded paper with my techniques um, it's going to do that business that the other ones do where it weighs down the colours quickly it drags it into the surface but then produces all this uh, dusty dustiness to it now hopefully that's completely wrong because um, I am looking for another alternative to this pastel mat so that's what I'm hoping and don't forget things these papers then like um, you know various supplies they don't always make them just for pastel or even for pastel at all Sometimes they're making them for coloured pencil. So just because I test something and it may not be suitable for my um, technique, then that doesn't mean it's not going to be fantastic for something like a uh, coloured pencil. I need to put more on you, okay? Because that's not dark enough. You can see by there I'm pretty much dark enough to get these highlights on. When I look at this, now the tonal value of the paper, so don't think it's the paper's colour doing it, the tonal value, I don't know what it's looking like on the camera really, but there's not a great deal of tonal difference there at all, okay? So I need to get some more of this on there, and what I'm finding is it's still not going dark like it is actually on the, the um, pan pastel pot. So I'm putting a bit more down on there, but I'm not going crazy because I can see it's just not getting dark on there anyway. So I'll try and rub it in a bit more and then I'll try another idea to see if we can get away with this paper. Okay, let's get that out of your way. Um, right, we leave the eye for pencil. Yeah, Sneak says the more pastel that I'm putting down, the bigger the difference is. The pastel mat seems far superior. Color fix is looking muddy to me, Gina. Um, yeah, that's that's what's happening. It's looking muddy, and uh, say so I can rub and rub. So let's look over the eye part, for instance, right? So clean little finger. I don't want people to think I'm being biased at all with pastel mat, right? Because I'm not. I really am looking to try and get a different paper. So if I go, okay, barely anything has come on the eye. Rub it. Okay, so clean's just going to get. Go like that. You see how it drags it over. So it never seems to like lock it in. Um, different techniques. People may love that. Who knows? Okay, so let's start having a look at um, perhaps a different way of using this. Let's get a dark pencil. Oh, I got a pit pencil. So I need to get this darker. And I'm going to put that by the side so you can see what I'm doing as well. Let's have a look. Let's get some lines in place so I can see where I need to go darker. So you can see what I need, what I'm having to do is kind of put these lines in place to create the, those dark elements that's in there. I want, if I do the same with pastel mat, I wonder now what will happen when I compare them. Let's have a okay. So obviously, 
these dark lines are not looking as pronounced as this because the background, the underlay is a bit darker. If I use that clean finger again, just on the corner by here, a couple of strokes that's wiped away, clean that off again. Yeah, see the difference? So that's locking it in place. This is allowing it to just smudge uh, away. So I better not keep doing that on there. Now I've got a kind of a feeling. Uh, what's happening here? So I'll carry on by here. Let's keep it going a bit more. Okay, I've got someone says, blending with color shapers seems to push more than fingers in sandpapers. I've also got my trusty, really cheap blenders here as well. People will have seen me using blenders on all of my videos. I've got color shapers as well. I've got no um, interest, financial interest with any of these things, okay? The only thing where I, up front with you now, the only thing I earn a tiny, tiny bit of money out of is the pan pastel set and they was kind enough to put a set together for me of colors that i thought was a basic starter pack and every one of those that we sell i get a small percentage but far as um, pencils go and color shapers go and papers go nothing whatsoever so when i tell you what i think my opinion is absolutely unbiased i've got color shapers for um pastel I wanted to try them out they look pretty good and I reckon on pastel matte when you use the color shapers they pretty much don't do anything hardly at all they're expensive I don't think they're any better on pastel matte than these cheap really cheap bits of um, rolled up paper basically and you can actually roll your make your own by rolling some printer paper up but on other papers, they may make a difference, a big difference. I'm just telling you what happens on pastel mat paper. And because I've tested loads of things from when I used to work in research and development, I'm just telling you what I'm finding. So I've got about three or four of those color shapers and I'd never, you won't see any of my videos so far anyway where I use any of them. Okay, someone says maybe the finger removes the sand surface and also the pigment. On some of the sanded papers, when you rub them, the sand comes off without a shadow of a doubt. I got a clean thumb, relatively clean. If I rub this really hard, even with my fingernail, right, none of that surface is coming off whatsoever. There is no sand whatever it is it's probably sprayed on you that's coming off is staying there so i'm not rubbing the surface off creating a smooth surface and then um, finding that that's got no tooth in it so i don't know what's going on with it but i'm, I'm just reporting on what i'm seeing now with the color fix ground that's definitely got like a sand, it probably is just sand in it. And I did a bit of a tiger draw with that and it seemed pretty good, but you can't go blending, you know, you can't go doing what I'll do with pan with pastel mat with these. It's not gonna work. I can tell see that, tell you that straight away. Um art by Esther says the color fix looks a lot like me tients. Tients? Yep, I've tried that as well, and it does, it is very similar. Very, very similar. So I expect uh, not a lot of difference between the two. So I can't rub that now. I can't because that's going to just smudge. So I've got to be careful what I'm doing there. Um, okay, it's Tell you what, I'll sharpen this pencil a minute. That's wore my pencil down really quickly. So let me sharpen that a minute.
Okay, I'm back. Let's get my microfiber cloth. Let's pop that out over the side. In fact, I'll pop it down by there because I think you'll still be able to see it by there. Okay, Doris said, I just requested by email the owner of the new Lux paper in the USA send you a sample to try. I found it fantastic for pastels or coloured pencils. Thank you very much, Doris. Um, hopefully I'll get something from them soon. They did offer um, to send me some months ago. Um, and I said to them, look, to be honest, with my techniques if this is anything like the UART type papers if it's like a real true sanded paper then it probably is not going to work for my techniques so I'm always honest with them because what I don't want is to feel obliged to uh, give them or anyone that sends me products there's not many that send me products to be honest I don't want to feel obliged to give them a bad review or a good review because they've sent me, you know, perhaps could be a hundred or a couple hundred pounds worth of product. I feel guilty then if I got to turn around and say, look, I don't like this. And it's difficult. I find it more difficult to actually give an unbiased review if they've offered to send me stuff or if I've asked them for something. So when I said I didn't particularly like or get on with the um, UART type papers for my technique, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them whatsoever, but I'm just saying that for my technique I didn't find them anywhere near as good as pastel mats. When I said that we just decided oh, perhaps there's probably no point actually sending me any to test. So I kept hearing more and more about the paper and I, my curiosity was uh, in trying it then. So then I thought I'd buy myself a couple of sheets of it so that I didn't waste a lot of money if I didn't like it because I've got I got a drawer full of different papers now that I've bought over the last three years and uh, I know I'll never use them again but they're too expensive to just throw away to be honest so when I'm testing things out I try not to buy much these days and I couldn't find any in the UK then and then we had this problem with the virus so that a damper on that and uh, so fortunately a friend said they'll send some over but I've no idea how long these things will take to come now don't forget this is not I'm not planning on this week being one of my best drawings at all I'm just trying to go fairly quickly so we can see what's happening without spending hours and hours on this I'm just putting a bit of underlay down so that I can put a bit of the lights on top. Because remember, I'd always say you need a dark enough underlay to be able to put or to be able to show the highlights on top. Let's put a darkish grey. I don't know if that'll be dark enough. Nope. What I can tell you is with this type of paper, you can see I can't get my thin lines as easily. And um, this create pastel mat creates kind of a smoothness to what I'm putting on. Now, if you want to take that to the extreme, then we're looking at a uh, velour paper. Now, I can spot a drawing usually that's been done on velour a 
mile away because it's got a fuzziness to it all the time. Now if you're drawing something like a cute bunny rabbit or something like that and it's all fluffy and fuzzy or a long haired fluffy puppy or kitten or something like that, that's great. It suits it and you've got that softness and it happens quite easily. Let me just look for a blue pencil. I'll probably do. Um, so that's cool with vela paper, velo paper. But the, the problem is it kind of is dictating all the time what your end result is going to look like. Because if I want something that's really sharply detailed, then it's kind of still got a bit of this fuzziness to it. So that's taking it to that extreme. Just my opinion, again, everyone's completely entitled to disagree with me, but I'm obviously entitled to my opinion too. Um, and I find pastel mat is kind of a happy medium with that. It allows me to get the layers and, and to have a certain amount of softness to my marks, but not really, really soft. Whereas when I'm using the same pressure with, with this, it's kind of giving me a very harsh, sharp mark. And I can see the texture of the paper as well. Okay, someone says, why is pastel mat not available in black? Well, they have got a kind of a anthracite, which is a dark gray, really. So it's not black black, but it's really simple. I think I show on another video. On YouTube, I've got literally hundreds of videos that nobody ever sees because lots of people don't know you can search an individual channel on there. Um, so if you do search it, go to my channel. I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I've, I've got a video on there coloring pastel matte paper. And basically, if you just use something like a gouache, you can make it whatever color you want. You don't want to go putting a thick paint on there to fill up the two for the paper, but um, there's no reason why you can't make it black. And I definitely show how to do that um, so that you can use like a white pencil on top. You could do it and then do this. So there's no problem with doing that at all. Now I'm using the same technique. Okay, so if, if, if a beginner has got color fix and they're following along with my drawings, um, then this is kind of the difference. Okay, Marge or Marg says, check out Emma Colbert. She uses Vela and gets very fine detail and doesn't use fixatives. Um, as I said, this is just my opinion. Everything I'm saying, I got no vested interest in it. I'm trying to help people out. And I'm just saying what I'm finding and what I'm seeing. I've seen Emma Colbert's work. To me, it's, um, she, she, don't get me wrong, she does absolutely lovely drawings. She uses a lot of soft pastel sticks. She uses the pencils just for some areas of fine detail at the end. She doesn't use pencils a lot like I use pencils a lot. She's using a different technique completely. Her work is normally large. Her details are not as small and finely detailed as I do it. And I'm positive she would agree with that because she's, she's doing it differently. She's got her own style, her own technique, and she, she'd use it very, she does very realistic portraits and pet portraits, but they're different than the way I'm using this. It's just a different process. And it's good because, you know, everybody is doing different things. I don't want everybody's to look the same either. I like looking at other people's, other artists' work. I like looking at Emma Colbert's work because it's different. If everything looked like mine or everyone looked the same as everyone else's, then um, there's no point really, is there? Just darkening by there. But I know she reviews things and papers as well. So, you know, if you're interested in that, 
check out her reviews too and these other artists obviously that do it as well now I, I feel that I absolutely need to be rubbing this in because this just looks really childlike and amateurish and too harsh this would be good possibly with like working out outdoors if you're doing landscapes and you want to put a direct mark with a pastel stick on I think it would possibly be better okay so I, I can take these marks now that's on you and I can rub them in right create a fuzziness to it that I want for the underlayer and they're still there the marks are still there if I take one section here and rub it in I think you can see the exact difference okay so let's put a bit of brown and I'm sure with Emma Colbert as well if we can carry on there that she uses her uh, velo paper or the velo paper I'm sure she uses that specifically to create certain techniques as well she probably uses it to get that soft look to it on, on portraits on pet portraits As I mentioned, I'm just, I didn't intend finishing any of this off really. I'm just showing you kind of quick, quick techniques or not even techniques so much. We're just showing you how these papers react. And the reason I wanted to do it as well, I was hoping this would perform better. I'll be honest with you. But the reason I wanted to show it is um, when I started with pastels years ago, probably 10 or 15 years ago um, I got some of that on grey paper INGRES and uh, I, I started out with all good intentions and um, I could not get it to work absolutely no way I could get the, the details and things I wanted on it I'm gonna save my fingers now on this paper and use one of these stumps to rub it rub it in otherwise even after this lockdown ends in probably a couple of months time and the gym reopens I won't be able to get him because my fingerprint will still be gone um, so I got so massively frustrated with that uh, paper because I got myself a set of pit pencils so they was okay this is a pit pencil that it wouldn't work and I could see no matter how much I practice I was not going to get it to do what I wanted it to do the way I was doing it without changing the style completely okay so if I rub that in now which is what I'd normally do um, so I gave up on that pastel put that those pencils back in the drawer for about 10 or 15 years that's a long time and um, thought oh, I, I haven't got the time to waste time on this I thought they would have been able to uh, I could have got more detail with it um, so I just carried on with my oils and then I saw other people's artwork now one of my really good pastel friends Angela now I don't know whether her surname is pronounced Frank or Franki or F-R-A-N-K-E and she's German and she told me what to get basically she said get a paper like pastel mat or pastel card by Sennelia and um, get that and carry on with your pit pencils and it'll work much much differently and I saw her work and I knew it was so good that's what I I knew that the, the actual supplies then were capable of um, doing what I wanted them to do 
because I wanted to do that realism that I saw in her work. So I knew I had the right supplies then when the, the paper finally came, this pastel matte paper. And I'm not afraid of the hard work of practice to get to the level I want to get at. I did it with oils, it took me years. I got to a level that I was happy with. So let me get a bit of a purpley color. So the hard work was never going to be, was never the problem. And I knew that when I, when I tried that paper that I couldn't get to work. But I knew if Angela could create that um, detail, it was possible. So I was willing to spend the time. And my first goal, I think was my first proper goal, first day I had a good goal of it, was the uh, cheetah eye. Unfortunately, or leopard eyes actually, fortunately I recorded it. I just thought I'll set up the camera and record it so that if things go wrong, I can look back on it and perhaps see where I'm going wrong. And I was really happy with the result. And uh, it was, it turned out so well that that became one of my best selling videos. So as soon as I'd got that right paper, it worked. And so I wanted to show on this video the difference with papers because some people can get frustrated and it's not that they haven't, they're they not doing it right, it's that I'm using pastel matte paper and um, they're using a different paper and that's the issue, that's what's not working right. But don't get me wrong, there's no doubt artists out there that's using colour fix paper that's doing fantastic work they'll probably blow mine away but they're not doing the techniques that I'm doing and uh, this is getting a bit frustrating with this now I must admit when I'm trying to do that it's, it's what you need to do with this paper is really work completely directly and not blend it at all it's got to go a lot darker here so what I'll do now I'll just rub that in to make it darker and I won't go blending anything on top of that because that's absolutely not working it's not doing the same okay Anne Pletz asked a question but I can't understand I think that's German um, so if you can, anybody can ask in English, you've got a better chance of me answering the question. So I'm going to go a bit darker here as well, quickly put that in. A bit, you can see even though I go in circular motions then, it's still got the, the actual line and the direction, it's not obliterating it all the time. So if you're going to use color fix, you need to use a different technique than this. This, this is what I'm doing is absolutely not going to work uh, on color fix. You can see that. Just darkening quickly by here. So I'm an hour in or something already. Need a dark layer to get the lights show on top. And I come back in and put some even darker elements. So if I put that over there, you can see it. I'm kind of working by there, roughly ish. I'm not spending much time on it. Go a bit up here as well. darker here Turn right 
here and go a bit darker as well. I'm leaving these little lines rather than colouring it all in because I got more chance then of the lighter tones touching a piece of paper that hasn't got as many layers. Yeah, I'll go in between these lines almost and um, I'll be able to get a sharper mark by doing it this way. Plasma mat is too expensive for just practice as I use the 9 by 11 size. Is it the best I've used so far? It's the best but need something less expensive it's not paper like me TNs. Well that's why I did that test on um, YouTube where I create my own pastel mat alternative using that color fix pastel ground where I actually paint that or coat that onto a, a thick watercolor paper and that for me or for you that can't afford the pastel mat or it's really expensive in your country that I think is the best way for cheaply making a paper that's worthwhile testing things on because let me let me show you once I've just done this a bit I'll tell you why a bit darker there okay so if for instance I'm doing a test on this paper because I want to do a big drawing on pastel mat and I think color fix is half the price in whatever country I'm going to test it on this what's the point because this is not reacting anywhere like the pastel mat paper is whatsoever so anything that I create on this is going to be useless transferring that technique over to pastel mat so then you've wasted your money on the color fix paper because it didn't do anything and um, you've wasted your time as well there's no point if the paper you're trialing things out on is not at least similar to the paper that you're going to do the drawing on well then it's not a trial is it you know it's not a test so in which case make up the paper like I show with that pastel ground because at least you can get some layers on there better than this um, how do you get the eye to be glassy that's a question I've got absolutely loads and loads of videos on YouTube free showing exactly how I do that exactly how I do it just getting some more pencils out a minute pop them run out the space up over there Hang on. okay right okay so let's just have a quick look see if there's anything else you want to darken up before I start putting some highlights on you usually stick the eye in fairly quickly but uh, this time I've left it a bit as I said don't exp this is no big detailed big deal type of drawing this is showing the paper and trying to get my point across on the paper more than anything okay make a start on the eye darker in the middle part we've got a bit of that blue there I'm not going to leave that out because that blue will sit on top of that surface no problem I'll get my little blender that's basically softening it pushing it into the surface making it all a lot smoother so that's that part um, let's see a color for the eye I may have to put a couple of colors on there need it to be kind of a dirty color so I might just use a dirty, dirty side of my stick by there. So there's actually just a bit of dirty colour there. That's going to be a bit light at the moment. Right. 
kerrotaan en. As I said, the only way you'd get away with this is by doing more of a painterly look to it and um, doing a direct application. So you use your sticks or whatever and do your mark, leave it, rather than keep going into it all the time because that's, that's not working. Not working at all. You can see how people get frustrated then thinking, oh, I spent £15 on this paper or whatever, and I'm not cut out to be an artist. This ain't working. Give up on it. Like I gave up on pastels for all those years. And it was pretty much the paper instead. Okay. So you can make that soft, but and it doesn't go everywhere. I think I got that shape wrong there. Eh? So I should really come a bit more like that. Okay. I can use my black, way black. And go that a bit more and a bit more in fact come around even more up there darker in the middle it's a bit better shape dark blue down here I'm not gonna go crazy detailed on the eye I want to see how the fur highlights layer a bit better first on the this other one so I'm gonna ask a question the glassiness is all about the highlights and I really I can make mine look even more glassy than this by putting in the bounce light like that when you've got let me get a light blue. Oh, so when you've got um, the blue coming in here, right? So I'll make mine a bit more pronounced. So that's the light of the sky above. Okay. So the eye is a glassy orb. Yeah. And all of this. Uh, colored part of the eye the iris is like a flat disc in there so this is I, I've got a video on oil painting um, that says oh Angela I've just come on hi I was talking about you later on you can watch the beginning of the video and hear what I was saying um, I got a master class on eyes right that looks at the structure of the eye so if the light is coming in here Think of that colour as a disc, right? The light's coming in and then it's going to bounce around inside. Okay, so it's going to come through there, bounce around by here and colour and lighten this section up. Like that, okay? You see, I'm doing this bit more pronounced now to show you. And then on this case, we've also got some light by here that's bouncing from whatever's in front of it. So the way to get like the glassiness and the three dimensional look is to remember the structure that's behind all, all of this eye. And that's what I teach then on that masterclass. And it's simple. Once you know those basic bits, then um, 
you can create a, a realistic looking eye in just a couple of minutes. It's not difficult at all. It's just knowing the structure of the eye. So Angela, I was saying how all those years ago, I was so frustrated with pastels that uh, the papers wouldn't work. I was using that, if you remember that, on gray type paper that wouldn't hold the layers. And then you recommend using either like a, a pastel mat or the pastel card that I know you like. And then when I got those, that's when it was a game changer and um, that helped a lot and that's when I started to fall in love with the uh, pastel myself if she hadn't told me the card the color uh, color sorry I'm thinking of putting a color in by you if you hadn't told me which paper to use I wouldn't be doing this now I would still just be doing my um, oils you know not every artist is willing to share what they've found over the years. They seem to be scared to tell other people they think it's some sort of uh, massive secret and that's a big mistake. You're always then kind of like defensive and it's not a good position to be in if, if you're kind of like that. At the beginning when I was teaching myself to draw, well to paint and I was putting all my findings basically on a website, on my website. So I was 20 years ago when the internet was first kind of starting. And I remember having one professional artist contact me and saying basically, how dare you give all the secrets away for nothing, or even on your videos or whatever, you're doing me out of a job. Because they wanted to keep the secrets. And uh, that kind of blew my mind a bit, that it. Just gonna have a look for my black black, my new pastel stick. I'll get a really black black. That'll make it punchy. These sticks are punchier colours than the pencils. Gives you a, a different dimension to your art when you can put that in place and get that type of blackness. You see how that really pops now? I don't know, I think I'll give up on this one because it's wasting my pencils and my pastels. Just on a quick read, I'm going to turn the brightness down on my phone because. I haven't got a massive amount left and this is how I'm trying to save that battery. Okay, yeah, the, the pastel card is rougher than the pastel map, but it holds it as well. Um, the, the thing is with it, it's usually more expensive than pastel mat, which kind of defeats the purpose of me um, encouraging people to, to use it then because they're already looking for a cheaper alternative. Uh, it's Sennelia, so once again it's European, so you know the American guys that are struggling to get past the mat, they're going to probably also struggle to get that as well. And it only comes in one colour, and you know how I like to use my greys. Pretty sure it only comes in one colour, like a sandy colour. I think that's right, Angela. Um, so I like to use my, my greys and browns. So that's another bit of an issue. There's also an issue with it's not water resistant. I like to use my gouache sometimes for the um, dark stripes and things. So that's another little bit of an issue. But I got around that. I've got a video on YouTube showing how I seal that card to stop. Uh, to make it water resistant okay because if you're blowing which you shouldn't be but if you are blowing it and a bit of your saliva comes out 
it, and you happen to rub the pastel surface on the Sennelia pastel card, it'll wipe the surface right off, right down to the shiny white paper underneath in one go. And I show that on that YouTube video as well. Now that could be a problem if you get into the end and you accidentally blow and then you rub it and then it's gone, it's, it's ruined, it's just ruined and that's that. So I was scared with that then. But I've seen Angela's um, work on pastel card and it's phenomenal. I know it can be done. Once you see somebody do it like that, you know the capabilities of the supplies. And then it's down to practice, experience, a little bit of talent as well. But that, that's not anywhere near as important as the practice and the experience. And I seem to be going ahead with this. I was only going to be showing a bit of the difference between these two papers, but um, I seem to be getting carried away as per usual. I wasn't going to be doing something like this today. I thought, I'll have an easy day today. And uh, Angela sent me over a surprise present that, uh, from Germany that brightened up my day and inspired me a bit. And I thought, oh, I'm going to do, I think I'll do a live stream. I think I'll try and help some people out myself. We got Angela to thank for this live stream, otherwise I'd probably be sitting down watching TV instead. Okay, let's blend that in a bit by there. Create a dark underlayer. Right, a little bit dark over there. I have give up on this. I think I showed enough what's happening there and um, for anyone who wants to use that paper, you're gonna you may find someone else on YouTube who's using it in a different way because um, I'm not your man to demonstrate that paper I, I couldn't do it this does not suited my technique in the slightest so I doubt I'll be sponsored by them okay but there we are no big deal right blend that in a bit still got plenty of tooth for the paper left about time I looked for some lighter colours, let's get rid of that. Right, so I'll look for some lighter colours. Like I say, I'm just winging this a bit. Let's cover that up. It looked prettier that well if I cover that up. So that's okay, I need something even lighter than that though. Right, I'll put lighter again. Just checking out some of my colours. So look at my pinks. That'll do. And that lighter one. I need to sharpen this uh, pencil up a second. Again, so I haven't prepared to do it. Uh, this detail to be honest. Just get a couple of sharper pencils going. Right. So you see that still allows me to to go on top. So let's have a look down here. Let's try and put this in fairly quick. I think I've kept everybody hanging about long enough now on a Saturday. I don't want to bore everybody to death. So I've got lots of 
long videos on um, my Patreon channel showing loads of things like, you know, big wolf demos and other big cats and other various things on there. So if you want to, if you're really looking for the, the long uh, tutorials, let me just check out some more colors for you a minute. Then that's the place to go. That's a bit too orangey, isn't it? Let's stick with these. So that'll be the lighter color. As I said, this is not going to be that pretty. Just showing how, how this pastel mat will allow the layers to go on top. Let's just go lighter. Are these mostly Carbothello pencils? When you see the colored shaft like that, that's Carbothello. When you see them wood colored with the little color on the top, that's the um, pit pastel colors. So combination of the two really going on most of the time. I'm not changing colors all the time. I'm um, just putting a bit of fur technique in to just show anybody who's interested in seeing that type of thing while well, I've done this much of the drawing. Like I say, I've got loads of videos showing fur and feathers, free videos on my YouTube. The long paid versions then on Patreon, you get access to three years worth of my recordings on there. For, I think, well, I know, I don't think, for um, $4 a month, so I worked out at a dollar a week, obviously. So I think that's pretty good value. Dollar a week. I know people are some people are struggling obviously financially this now so i'm doing more and more of these free live um, kind of lessons so hoping it doesn't mean that my patreon members membership numbers will drop substantially as i'm trying to give out these free long lessons as an added bonus for that and also for people like I say that are really struggling financially but um, you know if you can't afford a dollar a week then chances are you uh, are in you know such financial difficulties that you can't afford to be doing your artwork and things anyway and you probably can't even afford an internet connection or to pay for that at the moment because obviously that's a massive luxury if you haven't got a dollar let's hope things improve for everybody really soon <clears throat> i know i look forward to, to going out again really look forward to going out again let's look for a lighter brown let's just see what this color looks like That's okay. Let's 
not brilliant, but that's okay. Let's put some of this up here. And by here. Let's have a quick look at my phone. Is Geoconda a good choice for realistic animal drawings? This is a Geoconda. I test them once again on my YouTube channel. I feel a bit like a broken record. Same, same thing. If you check out and search my YouTube channel, you'll find the answers to most of the questions. Well, all the questions we've had today on me. So I've tested the Geoconda. They've got some lovely, lovely, vibrant, punchy colours. Punchier than the pit, punchier than the Carbothello. Brilliantly suited for things like butterflies and birds and insects. You know, the colourful type you get. Uh, flowers. Really, really suited to that. they got one bit of a drawback. Because they are so punchy. The, the offset them with punchy colours, right? The, the downside of a punchy colour is it's softer, usually. So these pencils are really soft. So if you're using a um, sharpener, like a crank sharpener, to try and sharpen them, very, very often they break. So keep that in mind. Because some people want to definitely just use a crank sharpener so that could be an issue that would be a bit of a no-go with them so what i would say then is to buy one or two when you're doing like an art order just get one or two of them and, and give them a go the same goes with these um karen dash pencils so they're the dearest pencil you can buy pastel pencil pretty much dearest always pencils Superb quality, superb, great color range, two or three times the price of a pit or a Carbothello. Um, once again, they've got that softness to them that makes them extremely difficult to sharpen. So you've got to keep in mind what's important to you and what you can work with and what you're not prepared to do. So if you're not prepared to be sharpening with a blade or something like that, then you know you need to look at more of the harder pastel pencils that's like a pit or the carbothello okay so the good thing is there's lots of different variety that you can get i'm using my pencil on the side now just to float a bit of color on top see like that so i'm still keeping my lines in there the colors float in on top a bit more just to kind of glaze on it Have another quick look at the phone. Art and diamonds. Jason, you're encouraging me to spend more time with my pastels, pastel pencils and tinted charcoals. Thanks. That's no problem at all. My pleasure. What's your opinion on Derwent pastel pencils? Oh. Um. They've got some excellent colours in there. They really have some different colors and you'll find in lots of the other sets the set i got it breaks the pencils break all the time like all the time they sent me a set and it's in that really lovely um, wooden box you know the top of the range set that i really loved the look of it opens up and it's magnetic inside and it's really cool but the ones i've got they just break whenever I'm sharpening them they break and uh, to the point that um, I just I just leave them in their box and I never use them if you watch my videos the only time you'll see me using them is when um, I can't find that specific color in any of my other sets and then I go and uh, look in there and very often that colors in there that I want but and then I put up then obviously with the uh, fact that half the time or more than half the time they break in 
So, um, I don't know, perhaps you'll have better luck with me. Buy one, buy one or two, buy a light colour. If you're going to do this kind of experiment, right, before you invest in a lot of the colours, buy a light colour, buy a dark colour, because the lighter colours generally are softer. And um, even in like a pit pencil like this one, okay, the, the lighter colours are a softer pencil. And they are more prone then to break in. So get a light one, like a like this, like a light pink or a, a, a um, creamy colour. Get something like that and get a dark colour then, like a dark brown or a dark blue. And then you've got, a, you know, a good um, range of it then to, for you to, to judge it by. Don't just buy like a dark one and think, oh yeah, I like that. I sharpened well. The darks do normally sharpen well. It's the lights that uh, are normally the more troublesome pencil. Now, people ask me, here's a common question on Patreon. It keeps, or before they join, they say, if I join, do I get access? How much does it cost to get access to other videos? I think it's because they don't believe the, the actual um, value of it, The what I give away. When you join, so if you join at $4, you get access to all the videos on that $4 level. So I've done one or two a month over three years. You get access to all those. <clears throat> I'm just going to pick out a lighter... Grey, I think I'll go with. Let's have a look what this looks like. So you get access to all the four dollar ones that I've done over three years. So that's about probably about forty videos. Now some of them are oils. Most of them now, the majority now are pastels. But for that price, you know, I don't think anyone can argue uh, with that. When I want a real sharp line, I push a bit harder. So if you joined at the, the top level, then that's a $9 level. You get access to all those on the $4. And you get access to um, another load on the nine dollar so you get access to like another 40 odd uh, videos on top of the other ones so you get twice as many then so you can see with this pastel matte paper this was the whole idea of doing this not demonstrating a wolf's eye i used to show you how i can keep layering with it which i'm doing so i'm not spending as much time as i normally would On these, so I'm just quickly showing you a bit of technique, but um, I'm still layering upon layering. It's not smudging away, and it's allowing the, me to do the same technique that I would use if I was doing oils by building one layer upon the next. Just check out another bit of let me just have a quick look at my phone a second. Um it's hard to match colours even with a set of sixty pit pencils, any tricks to make colours with the only set I have. It's kind of like everything I've been doing here now, I haven't had one colour pencil that's been the right colour. Yeah, so don't expect to be um, be able to pick up a pencil 
and to say oh that's that's our exact color that uh, doesn't really happen like that so even if you've got three sets of pencils and perhaps you've got 200 colors I don't know perhaps your human eye or whatever or the printer can do probably a million colors you know you can see that you're never going to get um, all those colors so you generally end up layering one color next to another and that's a lot of like um, practice and experience by keeping doing it you know and trying to match as close as you can because if you've got more sets then you have got a better chance of getting the color um, more accurate but you will never have all the colors that won't happen Oh, that, okay that'll work for these I don't all want to be the same bright whitey color um, some more of that bluey type of color going in at the moment okay I'll just carry on I was just checking the phone to see if there's any questions come up a bit quick then I could answer A lot of the times with colors as well we're actually trying to not just not really duplicate so much the photo that you're seeing but kind of just get the essence down of the animal or the subject as I keep saying on my videos is you know if the animal was in a slightly different light and then the light would be different on there anyway so concentrate more on the tonal values definitely the lights and the darks that makes that's much more important than getting the colors uh, exactly spot on because if this say this wolf had a little bit of greenery a tree by it in this exact light then then there would be more greens being bounced around and actually in it so try to be accurate but don't be too concerned if you get the tones right the lights and the darks and it's definitely 75 percent of the way there Let's have another look. Okay, now we can come. bit lighter now in a while just put a few little marks in right here now I think I'll look at something a bit lighter again 
is that color there right so this is very light here uh, do I need to put any darks back in first oh, I think I'll just go for it by here Don't let the brain just go on auto now. It's a bit more difficult when you're talking and trying to do it at the same time, but what you're trying to the stage you're trying to get to when you're actually drawing and things is that you're getting kind of you're getting carried away in it, lost in it, but you still know what you're doing. So don't go on auto, but try and get into like the flow of really, really concentrating. actually really being in that moment of drawing which is pretty which is pretty much impossible to do when you're talking like this but um, that's why I like to draw sometimes as well and paint with no music or anything I always used to have music on but you will get into the moment of just creating your art if you got it nice and quiet I'm going to bring in some whites in a bit and come down here. Have a quick look at the phone. Yeah, Sharon quarrels, pastels are more to true colour pigment than any other medium, no concerns over colour fastness. The, the thing is with like fastness and all that business, right? Because I used to work in a, a lab and we do testing on things. Now, we do some of this like fastness testing as well. And it's usually done in a really extreme way. Obviously, it wasn't I wasn't doing pastels and things. We was doing other types of colours. And what you do, you get a UV lamp, and you'd have put your colours on a your swatch of whatever, and then blast it with this UV lamp, really close by it, twenty four hours a day, and you'd see how that coped. And it's you'd have some of it masked off. And then you'd remove that mask and you'd see your, your fading or color shift or whatever. And it's really, really extreme. Now I would never be suggesting, for instance, for somebody to, to take a piece of artwork, like an oil painting or something, to put it in a conservatory in the summer, in high temperature, with the sun blasting on it most days, so I'm obviously not talking about whales <laughs> and um, expect it to last a hundred years and even when they are doing these really light fast ratings on some of these colors and that they're not gonna expect it to be blasted like that with you know extremes they say in these hundred year business usually when it's actually in a museum and the lighting is so dim in there that you've got to give your eyes like 10 minutes just to adjust so you can actually see the artwork because it's so dark so personally you know every each to their own but i don't concern myself with uh, the light fastness that much personally but you know for somebody who does and they're worried about it then um you know do what you got to do each to their own with that you know everyone can agree or disagree but when people are having big conversations over this and I've seen loads of different conversations with different people over these things when they are all discussing that and it never ends and they never come to an agreement anyway while they're doing all that I'm actually uh, painting and drawing and doing my thing
Okay, so let's pull out. Let's go even lighter in a few places because I haven't got a great deal left to do. So let's <coughs> boost it up a bit more. Just in a few areas. So you've seen how it um, performed the past map paper in comparison. Let's put a couple of those little dark bluey areas back in, I think, by here. There's a dark blue and a darkish grey. <clears throat> so this is why I, I love that pastel matte paper. And it's my favourite at the moment. You can see why. So it's a pretty quick drawing, wasn't it? Considering I, once again I got carried away. So if you ever see me saying that I'm going to do a quick uh, 15 minute test on paper or something, make sure you come with biscuits and supplies. Because <laughs> you know I'll probably just get carried away. And that's why I say to people to, if they can do five minutes of art a day, Say to yourself, right, I'm going to do five minutes. I promise myself I'm going to do five minutes. You never do five minutes. You always get carried away. You always keep going. Let's get a bit of black up in there. That'll make that eye pop a bit more, I think, if I get some. More darks, but there. Yeah, that was okay. You can put some darks back in then, if you want. I'm not going to go crazy doing another layer though. Not for this, uh, just a rough bit of a test. Let's have a quick, a quick look at the phone. Yeah, I believe the vast majority would like the art, the artwork to last 20 to 30 years or even shorter. Oh, and that's just shot off. It all just updated then on my phone. Right, I'll just crack on. Okay, let's go with the white. Carbothello. Light it down here. Twirl on my pencil. I don't want to create flat edges. And if you want to go whiter, whiter, really punchy white, then uh, look towards more of the softer pastel pencils. So I'd be a Caran d'Ache, Carbofello, uh, Caran d'Ache, um, Gioconda, sorry. And then when we want to go white it again, look at the pastel sticks. So you can sharpen up your uh, Conti sticks and that then. That will give you bright, bright whites. If you get a chance before you go, could you please Give me a thumbs up on this video. It's usually at the bottom of the video. I say that on all my videos because I get, sometimes I get 5,000 views, 2,000 views, and things like that on them. And I ask for a like, and I perhaps I'll get 100 if I'm lucky. But it helps me to spread the word, and then I can keep doing these. If I don't get the reach, there's no point in me doing them. Because virtually nobody's seeing them then, and uh, that's a shame. So, if you can take a second, click the like, and if you want to be notified 
when I'm doing videos like this. If you click the bell, that's the notification part then. So you won't miss the videos, yeah? Okay, so I think I'm just about done with this. So if anybody got any more questions, they're still on for another minute. Just having a quick look through. Can't see many more questions there. Um, okay. I think I'm not far off done anyway. Really. You can keep going with these. You can, because the pastel mat will allow it. So you can keep layering on top. People say they find it difficult sometimes. When you're doing the mark, twirl the pencil like that. Twirl it. See, twirl to get the thin, little thin lines. I show you all this in detail on my Patreon channel. I'm plugging it because that's why you're in my living. That funds me being able to do the free videos like this. Without that, there wouldn't be no free videos because I wouldn't be. I would be working in a real job. So I'm really fortunate to be able to do this you're in a living out of it so I'll have one last quick look before I go down and get something to eat at my chat screen just to see if there's anything else that somebody wants to ask Got about a 20 second delay I think it is from the time you ask till it comes up on my video and I can see it so you know be with me then just coming in with a couple more darks there have a quick read do you do any whoop I was just gonna read that and then it disappeared someone was asking me do I do any digital artwork I bought a um, XP pen large screen last year and uh, I haven't really had time to use it I did use it and did a little bit of a lion female lion's eye and I was really happy how that turned out and I really really want to be learning how to do it because it's, they, it's great with digital because you can try all different things out and lighting and that and uh, you can do the effects really quickly so you can try things out before you actually um, do it with uh, your with your whatever If you wanted to do it with your um, oils or pastels or like say whatever, I think I put a bit of vivid blue in by here. In fact, let's make that even bluer. Make that look a bit more wet. Punch that blue up there as well. I think that looks a bit better. Okay, so have another quick look. Are you going to add Patreon link when you post this video? Yes. It is um, all the W's dot Patreon dot com and then it's forward slash 
wildlife art one word and then you'll find me on there the special black stick what was it well Laura I'm sorry but I I can't repeat that now because it was a gonna be a secret that I made a mistake in saying no seriously it's Prismacolor there you go Prismacolor new pastel easy to get in the USA not so easy in the UK but you can get other sticks you know but I, I like these they sh they're hard really hard and they sharpen up well they're much much darker than say a Conti stick but the um oh what is it called hang on let me have a look in my supply in a minute the Faber Castell sticks are pretty much as black so you could get them instead Just have another quick look. Angel Gardener, do you have any printing of your art at home? And if so, what printer? Okay, I don't know. I don't print my own art at home, no. I see what you mean now. I thought you meant for like reference photos or something. Um, so no, I don't do that. To be honest, the print market died many years ago. And so I don't really bother with it anymore. I, I put some on Fine Art America because it's easy. But um, no, that, unfortunately that uh, that all died out a few years ago. So I, I don't waste my time basically on that. If you want to get into into that, then you you know you've got to really spend a lot of time with your marketing and things specifically to to sell your prints. And really concentrate on it. it's not something you can just do willy-nilly and expect to, to sell it's a real real difficult market to um, earn a living from these days it's not like it was years ago just as I'm looking at questions I'm just popping that on Okay, so I think I'll, I'll um, call it a day on there. Um, Rich, you see how you just keep playing with these things, don't I? I think I'll leave it at that. I'll peel that back to show you where I give up on the colour fix paper. I don't think I was being biased at all when I was showing with my technique don't forget using my techniques this didn't work at all felt like it was going to work it seemed to have a nice roughness and things to it <clears throat> but um with a direct approach with no blending um perhaps with a more impressionistic approach to it rather than this detailed look then you know it could i've seen people do good work on this but you can see the difference between being able to layer with the pastel mat instead makes a massive massive difference there and um that's that's why it's you know pretty much my it is my favorite paper by far we put a bit of that green by there to show where the background is so it's definitely my favorite paper and you can see why I don't really go looking for much else because I've tried this paper now for so for the three years that it's worked and um, there's not a great deal of point trying other stuff really there's nothing matches it I'm just playing around again now and just like to finish a bit of this corner off because um, kind of puts the wolf in a bit of a scene then you, you know even a little bit of green like this you know that uh, what that means is is a bit of landscape behind it and now if I put a couple of little hairs by here that'll bring the wolf forward send the background back and finish that little area off I say it's not a not a big deal drawing this isn't it's just a 
playing around bit. Let's put a couple of little black bits back in there. I better go downstairs soon or my wife will probably think I've collapsed at the easel because my promised I only be a half hour it's turned into the usual two hours so if you've got any art friends and they're interested and perhaps try and pass slowly and do something like that give them a shout and tell them about my YouTube channel because I say there's lots of stuff on there and it's free don't have to pay a penny for it if you want to learn more then you can go on to my patreon but you can learn plenty on my free YouTube channel so last call on the questions Few little light the strokes by you and then I'm gonna call it a day. Hope everybody enjoyed it. A little bit of a surprise, I wasn't intending on doing something today. Hope you're all coping okay as much as possible. No I got about 20 second delay so I'll just keep a quick look on my phone and don't forget if anybody missed this live um, on YouTube you can catch back up on it anyway so it's recorded on there so you can watch it free on there anyway and the tip would be for a cheap version of pastel mat check out my video where I show you how I um, create using the color fix pretty sure it's the color fix but if you look at the video that says creating your own pastel mat paper it shows you something you could use for your test pieces that you will be able to layer it's not as good as this but um, you will layer you will be able to do some cheap test pieces and when I'm doing test pieces I'm cutting little pieces out as well and just doing that like half this size and trying a bit you won't always use a full sheet of paper when you're doing little tests so that really you know keeps the price down then okay so thanks everybody for joining me and I'll see you all again on the next video